Aloha, this is Sherry Brack, and I'm here in Kona with Congresswoman Maisie Hirono. Aloha, Congresswoman. Aloha. Always good to be back. And especially, it was so nice to see Cindy opened up. The last time I was here, her whole shop had been destroyed by the waves that came with the tsunami. So she's really, I, I told her, Cindy, you are a ray of sunshine. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. What are you doing here in Kona? Oh, I'm here to talk with a lot of people. I mean, earlier I met with uh, David Fuertes. Uh, he's a farmer, and, and, and he is uh, really a proponent of natural farming, where you use not pesticides, not all these uh, terrible chemicals, but you restore the soil in a natural way, and he was telling me all about it and, and how bountiful his harvests are as a result of it. So I wanted to talk with him about that. Are you also doing some follow-up from your tsunami visit? I know you were instrumental in helping Cindy Coates Gallery here get funding to repair, but tell us about what you're observing. It's kind of you to say, and, and sadly, some of the other people who are here, who are you know whose shops are damaged, um, they've left, but Cindy's still here. So you know she's like this little anchor right here. And it's good to see that she's up and running. But her entire inventory was destroyed, all her paintings, and it's great that she she said she spent some time in her studio and with feeling guilty and just painting away. Well, we're standing here and we're actually right across from Kailua Pier and the sidewalk and the yes. seawall. And the county of Hawaii advanced the money to replace the sidewalk because they had to do so. Iron Man was Iron coming, Man. there would be 20,000 yes. people. But the seawall is not yet repaired from the tsunami and they're waiting for approval and funding from FEMA. As our Congresswoman, are you doing anything to assist with the moving that up? Well, anytime that I can make inquiries and find out the status and what's holding things up, I'll do that. And so now that you mention it, I'll get back to my staff and make sure that we're doing everything we can to help the county restore that seawall. Well, I'm surprised the county hasn't already come to you since I think that's one of your jobs is to maybe help they facilitate. Have, they, maybe they have a few other things on their minds. I don't know. But these are challenging times. And in Congress, I am very much focused on creating jobs. And you know, we still have uh, too many people unemployed, not just nationally, but here. And, and I think talking about things like seawalls, I would like to see Congress really move on infrastructure investments. And that's things like seawalls. And we really uh, should push for that kind of help from the federal government. Unfortunately, not everybody in Congress feels the way I do about it. And they're in the majority right now. But uh, we shall persevere. I will continue to fight for you know, the folks back home. Well, Congresswoman Hirono, you brought up Congress, and that really is the next topic. There's a lot of people who are really dissatisfied, unhappy, appalled, shocked with what's going on or what's not going on in Congress. And the most recent example, in addition to the partisan bickering that goes on, the most recent example is the failure, the total failure of the bipartisan super committee to reach budget accord where they could actually cut the deficit. They basically threw up their hands. Now, you've chosen to leave the House of Representatives at the end of December 2012, January 2013. Between now and then, what are you going to do to try to help the House of Representatives? Oh, and I want to mention the reason you're leaving is that you are running for Senate, and I'll get to that in a minute. But between now and then, what are you going to do to try to help the House of Representatives get on a more even keel that certainly would make the citizens feel like Congress is working on the citizens' behalf and not for their own special interests? I've always spoken out for the kind of work that we ought to be focused on, which is job creation. And this whole year is almost over, and there hasn't been a single direct job creation bill passed by the House, except a couple of weeks ago, we passed a higher a veterans uh, bill. And that was bipartisan, and that was good. It gave me hope that maybe uh, we're going to be able to pass some other bills that focus on job creation. But the, I, you know, we have to continue to be that voice because there are a lot of people who want jobs who want us to address that they don't see it happening in Congress but they should know that there are many members of Congress who are pushing for it we just are not in the majority in the house but that doesn't mean we're going to be silenced so I am very hopeful that 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 things like the hire the veterans bills maybe there are some others that we can work on and in fact I myself am uh, working on a bipartisan measure that I'll be happy to talk with you about a little bit later on okay well, tell us right now, what is this bipartisan measure? <laughs> it's to promote more tourism uh, okay. to Hawaii. So uh, I'll be ready to talk with you folks a little bit later, maybe okay. in December. Okay. I'll come okay. back. 
Now, you are running for Senate, which means that possibly starting in January 2013, you would be a member of the United States Senate. And if you get that job, what are you going to do in the Senate to try to get rid of the bipartisan bickering to get the Senate moving towards activities that really do help the people instead of focus on divisive interests? It always takes two to tangle. Right? And if you are in a body where um, the majority is not interested in creating jobs and they're not interested in supporting infrastructure investments, no matter how desirous you are of wanting to work in a bipartisan way, uh, it's not going to happen and that's what we've seen. This coming election is going to be very critical because the people of this country are going to get to decide whether they want people who not just talk about wanting to work in a positive, uh, collaborative way, but who actually do it you know and that's those are the kind of people that I hope that the people of this country will be able to determine are the ones who ought to be sent back to Congress so this is going to be a very critical election year and um, thank you for mentioning that I'm running for the US Senate and I and I will continue to push for job creation because we're not going to be over the hump next year it's going to take us a while longer to push our economy ahead. I wish there was more that we already did to move things along. But the latest figures show that um, there's a, we're going in the right direction, albeit a lot slower than we would like to see. So in, in the Senate, I would want to be among those who push for a lot more economic uh, support and support for small businesses. Not just talking about it, but putting some resources into it money for small businesses, support for uh, innovation. You know, you mentioned that you're going to be in a tough race, and that's true, and that it is very important who we send to the United States Senate. You're going to be facing Congressman, former Congressman Ed Case in the primary, and then if you win the primary, you will likely be facing former Governor Linda Lingle. The people of Hawaii Island would definitely like to see you talk with both of those in a public forum. So can we count on you agreeing to participate in candidate forums here on the island against both of those opponents? I'm sure that's going to be down the line, of course. But right now, I talk with my constituents on a daily basis. And when I'm home, for example, today, I'm, I'm meeting with a lot of people. And um, I had lunch at the Pine Tree Cafe where there were a lot of people there and I talked with them. And as you know, I do coffee talks. I hear from them, uh, my constituents all the time. So that dialogue, that conversation is going on all the time. I wanna listen and hear directly from my constituents. And right now, to tell you the truth, how many people out there really are thinking, oh yeah, we wanna see everybody debating. No, they care about when are we going to get our economy going? When are we going to create jobs? And that's my job right now. I still have a job. You know, I still have a job representing the people of this district. And I'm going to keep doing that job and making sure that I'm pushing for middle class, you know, families, uh, that I'm pushing to make sure that our seniors have health care and uh, through Medicare and Social Security remaining strong. I want to make sure that our keiki are getting the kind of educational support that can really enable them to, to learn. And that's what my job is right now, creating jobs and those other issues that I hear from my constituents all the time. Hey, help us with those things. Well, that's important, but what I really want to know is, will you agree to candidate forums to face your opponents, Ed Case initially, and then most likely Governor Lingle? As I said, of course, I mean, that's always happened. And so I envision that that is going to be happening down the road. But right now, I still have a job to do in this year and um, most of next year. Okay. Those, can those candidate forums will come. But again, I, you know, I want to emphasize that my constituents know they can call me anytime. They can tell me what's on their minds, and I hear them loud and clear. And that is why the priorities I have, jobs, support the middle class, support our seniors, support our keiki, that's what I'm doing. I want to ask you, Congresswoman Hirono, about what's been discussed recently in the press about insider stock trading in Congress. This all came to light with a 60 Minutes news report a couple of weeks ago, and it's since been covered in The Economist. It's been covered on National Public Radio. But apparently, it's not illegal specifically for members of Congress to profit from information that they receive in committees or other advanced briefings. And it's been shown that members of Congress actually do a whole lot better in trading stock 
than do the general public. In 2006, a bill was introduced to stop specifically to not allow insider trading in Congress, and the author of that bill said that he just couldn't get much support. He had about seven or eight co-sponsors. Since the 60 Minutes report came out, there are now 92 sponsors of that bill. Talk to us about that. You are now one of the sponsors of the bill. So talk to us about what you think is the solution to the perception that members of Congress are using their inside knowledge to profit financially. I think everybody would agree that that's not acceptable and that's why I've signed on as a co-sponsor of a bill to stop that. At the same time, we need to have economic fairness in this country. Is it right that the richest 2% of the people in our country should continue to get huge, huge tax breaks that the rest of us don't get? Is it fair that the big oil companies should continue to get billions and billions in benefits that they don't need? So, you know, of course I believe that there shouldn't be any kind of insider profiteering by members of Congress or their staff. That's why I've signed on to that bill. But at the same time, there are a lot of other areas that, that we need to um, address and make sure that our tax policies are fair. And I don't think they're fair in, on, in, on that score either. Two more questions about that issue. Why did you not sign on to the initial bill until after the 60 Minutes report came out? I don't know that I, you know what, it, it's, uh, I've signed on to a lot of bills, and basically what I look at is, you know, protecting the consumers, protecting the public, and if that person did not come to me and say, hey Maisie, this is a great bill, sometimes we actually don't find out about it, but I clearly signed on to the Wall Street reform, it's the kind of bill I would have signed on to, Good. so it's not as though I made a conscious decision not to sign on to it. Some have suggested that one appropriate measure might be to require members of Congress to put their financial assets into a blind trust, which I believe the President of the United States does. But what are your thoughts about that? Is that a good solution or is that a necessary thing? I don't know what the appropriate response would be because uh, uh, that, that presumes that um, uh, we all have huge financial resources, and I would say that there are many members of Congress who are not in that position. So I think where there's clear um, uh, abuse, we ought to address that, and that's what we're attempting to do with this bill. You've talked, Congresswoman, about a lot of your key priorities, jobs and families and getting the economy going. Is there anything else you'd like to say to your constituents? Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's always good to be home. And, and you know, I, I know that people feel that they can approach me um, on the street. People do that all the time. They call my office because a large part of what we do is responding to constituent inquiries. And I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those that we work on. And I have a terrific staff. So we will continue to do that. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Maisie Hirono. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.